It's an honor to meet you. Hi. And uh, who are you? So I'm Preet Banerjee. I'm the director of HP Labs and the senior vice president of research for Hewlett Packard. Wow. And where are we? Because this is a famous uh, couple of rooms here. This is. And very the, few people get to visit these. This rooms. is the founders' room. Uh, as you know, HP was cr created by two leading visionaries, uh, David Packard and. Bill Hewlett, and we are in front of the Founders Room. Uh, that's the office of David Packard. That's the office of Bill Hewlett. And uh, it has, the offices are preserved exactly as they were, with their original furniture and so on. Yeah. A truly iconic moment. Uh, what, what does that, because you've been here, what, almost a year, not yes. even a year yet. Yes. What, how does that history tie to what you're trying to do? So uh, Hewlett and Packard both believed in, uh, in innovation and uh, trying to encourage engineers in HP as a leading technology company to continue to innovate throughout their years of leadership. And I feel privileged that I work for HP Labs, the research, the corporate research arm of HP uh, today. And uh, our charter is to continue to innovate, it, innovate for the future of HP uh, beyond the product roadmaps uh, for HP the company. So we're in the same building as Hewlett and Packard and I'm just delighted to be here. Tell me a, a little bit about what, how you're trying to put your own stamp on HP, on the HP way, I guess. So you come out with a, because you're the head of the labs. The labs are where things will come three, five, ten years from, from now will be products that we see and, and touch. What are you trying to do? What's your vision? What are you trying to do with, the, with the, uh, your group of researchers here? So HP Labs today is about 600 researchers, uh, mostly PhDs, in seven worldwide locations. Uh, a majority of our researchers are right here in Palo Alto, about 300 plus. We also have about 120 researchers in Bristol, England. Uh, we, are, we have researchers in Haifa, Israel, yeah. Beijing, Tokyo, uh, Bangalore, and we just started a lab in St. Petersburg, Russia. Together, these researchers uh, were working on some very cool projects. Uh, in fact, when I took over August 1st of last year, uh, they were working on 150 different projects, smaller projects. And when I came to labs, I felt that uh, they were, the researchers were not quite having the impact that I wanted them to have. So one of the things I pushed for um, in labs is to reorganize our structure so that we, the researchers work collaboratively on large projects with high impact. And that's what is going on. Uh, so the re reorganization is complete. The researchers have uh, already started working on some very exciting high impact projects. Uh, uh, the PR people told me that you're uh, organized around five key themes. Can you tell me a little bit about those themes and give me a taste of some of the big things that you're working on? Sure. So our, the high impact research areas are what we believe will be the most complex challenges uh, and opportunities facing our customers in the next decade. We have identified five broad themes. Uh, they are information explosion, dynamic cloud services, content transformation, intelligent infrastructure, and sustainability. Yeah. What we have done is we have reorganized our labs into 23 separate labs, and they are all contributing to these five themes. The information uh, explosion theme is, uh, is trying to solve the, the massive uh, information explosion problem. The, the, uh, you may know that the world is, is going to create more information in the next five years than has, his, and has existed in the history of the world. Yeah. So uh, trying to find 
relevant information in this massive haystack is very, very difficult and hard. So our researchers are working on those kind of exciting things. For example, there is a, a project in the Enterprise Informatics Lab in Bristol that is working on how to find relevant information in an enterprise. The information which is both structured and unstructured. Structured that exists in a database, unstructured that exists on a web, and how you can collect all the information and make it relevant to the um, enterprise users. Do you think you're going to get a key break breakthrough there? Because I know many companies, I, I have friends who work in uh, Dow Jones, for instance, that makes the Fictiva search engine. They've been working at that for years, and it, it's really hard to find a way to get information out of your enterprise in a, in a concise oh. way, you know, and find the information that you need. It is hard, and that's why we are working on these kind of issues in labs. In fact, to put it in context, uh, HP has an R&D budget of about $3.6 billion. Uh, we have 30,000 technical contributors working for HP overall on future generations of products and services. But those are largely incremental, right? Next year's laptop, next year's software, and so on. What HP Labs is working on is really far out, difficult, hard to solve problems. As part of our uh, new approach to doing labs, we have taken a portfolio approach of, of solving problems. And so where one third of our work is basic fundamental research, one which has timelines of five to 10 years out there in the future. A third of our work is applied research uh, shorter term, maybe two to four years into the future. And a third of our work is product development and that is tied to HP's current products and services, yeah. maybe six to 18 months in the future. This problem that I just talked to you about is a very basic, hard problem, but if we solve it, when we solve it, I think it will have tremendous value to yeah. HP and its customers. Sustainability, I, uh, certainly we all care about global warming and uh, the impact of our uh, technology on, you know, uh, recycling and stuff like that because we're filling up our garbage dumps with lots of uh, old computers now. What do you think is going to happen there? What, what are some of the things that HP is trying to hit breakthroughs on to see some big, big results there? So first of all, uh, that is one of the five key themes uh, for HP Lab. So we clearly believe there is a tremendous future uh, for contributions from HP Labs in that area. We have a, a, the Sustainable IT Lab here in Palo Alto led by Chandrakan Patel who is a, 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 a visionary person. I know I'm, you're going to meet him I think uh, later today. Um, yeah, his, we're going to see the data center of the future. Right? Exactly. So there is a project that we have just started called the Sustainable Data Center. The concept is, uh, you've, you've probably heard about these large data centers that exist at Amazon and Google and so on. These data centers have run in buildings almost as big as this and they, are, they consume like 100 to 200 megawatts of power. Yeah. That's huge and that's clearly not good for the environment and for our energy crisis. So what we are working on is some technologies that will reduce the total cost of ownership by about 50%, reduce the carbon footprint of these data centers by about 75%. Using technologies that are based on some of the technologies that we have just recently worked at HP Labs called dynamic smart cooling, so where we have used sensors that are positioned strategically in these data centers that sense the temperature and appropriately flow the air conditioning so that it's, it requires much less energy consumption than it does in the, in the that it did in the, in the past. Another very exciting project that we are doing is uh, a project called Tools and Methodologies for Sustainable IT Ecosystem. You were mentioning all these computers and printers and so on that in the, in the dump trucks. Uh, we are taking a holistic view, a kind of a cradle to cradle view of the world. So when, a, when, you, when you build a monitor, you build a computer, you start from extracting materials from Mother Earth, right? And then you do uh, materials extraction, you do materials operation, you look at the during operation, you, you, you do certain things, and then finally the material goes back to as recycling. We are trying to identify for every one of the components 
the cost and the carbon footprint that it has on, on the world. It's a very ambitious project and it's a project that we will lead uh, but we need a lot of partners and uh, we are embracing a concept of open innovation where we are going to work with our university colleagues, with other companies and so on to really make a difference so that end customers when they acquire a purchase a product they'll be able to just look at a label and say this will have a carbon footprint of X yeah. and that they will be able to make informed judgments about, uh, about making these uh, choices. Sustainability is not only about being relevant to society. Actually, we, there is a, a business play. It's about lowering the carbon footprint, but also about saving energy and saving money. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I don't think sustainability will just happen uh, because you are, you're trying to be good to, to society. We are trying to find creative ways where we can actually do both. We can save money as well as uh, save the environment. Yeah. Tell me, what, are your labs doing anything with mobile? Because I, I know, you know, a 16-year-old in India or China, their first experience with the internet is probably on a mobile device, not on a computer the way I grew up, right? Are, are you thinking, are, you, are your researchers working on mobile and thinking about how they're going to do something that's 10 times better than the iPhone, for instance, or something like that? We are working on mobile technologies within the context of two themes. We have an, a, a theme on intelligent infrastructure where we are designing the next generation of smart computing devices, networks and architecture and software that will provide a seamless uh, experience to customers. And uh, so we are working on the next generation mobile devices as part of that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, theme in the multimedia communications and networking lab. The other theme that this is being pushed for is the theme of content transformation. We all own a, a large variety of de devices uh, like your, your mobile devices, your laptop, your desktop, your HDTV and so on and you, uh, you, you watch content on these variety of devices. Rather than create content and store content in these widely different devices, we will store the content in only one form and then transform the content dynamically on the fly based on the networks, sort of the, the, the width of the pipe. Yeah. So we'll do appropriate encoding, decoding to perhaps show the video less crisper on a mobile device than on an HDTV. But, uh, so there's some very exciting technologies well, yeah. that are being developed. You don't developed. have as many pixels here, right? Exactly. You know? So we, we were just in uh, Washington, D.C., and, and, and the Nizeum has a $3 million screen that does 1080p, 2 million pixels. I don't have 2 million pixels on my uh, cell phone, right? So I don't need the same content on that screen as I need on my little tiny uh, you know, handheld. There's a project called, that we just started, a very high-impact project called Connect Us, where the future of, of computing and communications really is on how people connect uh, among each other in a social context, in a context of businesses and collaboration and so on. And uh, today we oftentimes travel to Washington DC or New York or wherever to, to talk to people and, and communicate. Uh, in the future, we will not need to travel. We'll be able to communicate very well, as good as this, except without you having to drive to Palo Alto. Yeah. I don't know if you saw. The I don't know if it'll. Can we shake? <laughs> yeah. actually, That's really hard to do over an HD link, right? <laughs> actually, uh, we are working on technologies that will. So let me t tell you about the basic concept, and then I will I will address the shaking hands piece. Right. Uh, it's not that far out. So the the idea is that uh, we have uh, HP Labs created a technology that is now a product, an inf influencer technology called Halo. I don't know if you saw the Halo conferencing facilities, but essentially when you go to a conference room and it, it is a very high quality video conferencing environment which gives you the look and feel of as if you are actually there. So researchers in, in Bristol and Palo Alto and Russia and so on can get together in a conference room and that literally feels like you are right there. The quality of the video is so good, the quality of audio is so good, and along with that is the environment. It feels like you're in the same conference room. Yeah. But the cost of that system is very high. It, yeah. It's in the order of some hundreds of thousands of dollars per room to install. So our vision is that is, it's really cool, but it's not uh, applicable to the average person. So what we're trying to do is to provide that kind of a 
a communication environment much cheaper, better quality, much cheaper. Yeah. So it's about the audio and visual pieces, right, of the interaction. But you can, we all have sort of five senses. So why not transfer the concept of touch? You just said shaking hands. There are ways using haptic uh, technologies where you can actually, you will touch a thing on your computer and that sense of touch will go on the other computer and you can actually feel that sense of touch or whatever. Uh, you know about the Nintendo gaming systems and Wii's and so on, right? I mean, they do, they vibrate. What is that? That is providing a, a, a mechanical feedback. And those are the kinds of things that we are working on in the future. Interesting. Um, when I was in Israel, I met with some guys who were doing inkjet research, not, not HP guys, although they were former HP guys. Um, and inkjet means you can spray a piece of ink in a very precise location. They're actually building solar uh, cells using the, the same kind of technology. Obviously, printing is a huge deal to, to HP, right? And this is the building where I saw my first laser printer <laughs> back in 79. What, what are your researchers doing about printing, about trying to put things onto paper? So the printing uh, research is done under the uh, theme of content transformation. And specifically, our researchers are working on transforming the, uh, the world of printing in the area of what we call the from analog to the digital world. Uh, today, uh, we print about 53 trillion pages per year uh, from the web, from various sources and so on. About 90% of those pages are printed on analog or offset printers. Uh, only 10% are on digital printers, the kind that you see in your inkjets and, and digital printers. We want to transform that uh, with a concept uh, which you call every page is different. So when you re read your uh, copy of the Wall Street Journal today, right? You, you had maybe 60 pages of the Wall Street Journal and you did not read every page because it was not quite relevant to you. But based on your personal interests, we will have a custom version of Wall Street Journal available to you exactly in the city that you live in. Yeah. Now that technology is not, a, I mean, you could do that with digital printing, but today the cost of digital printing in terms of cost per page and the throughput, the rate at which you can print is so much worse than analog, you can do that. So our researchers in uh, both in Israel and in, in Palo Alto are working on future generation commercial printing technologies that will reduce the cost per page by a factor of 10 to 100, increase the throughput by a factor of 100, in which case commercial printing is going to be completely, will take over the analog world. And that's our vision. It will have huge impact. That's interesting because uh, yeah. uh, the Wall Street Journal is just two blocks up the road here, and uh, if you ever get a chance to tour the plant there, it's a, a remarkable plant to, to see how many they can print sixty thousand copies an hour. Right? Exactly, and and, and they need to start printing at maybe three o'clock in the morning to start the printout and the distribution at five, right? So they have a very small amount of time in which they have to print so many pages. We will allow that kind of throughput with digital printers in the future, but with a custom version of, of Wall Street Journal. And uh, this is a $700 billion uh, market. So if we make an, an impact, it will have massive economic and social impact. Interesting. In one more minute, what, what else are you working on? What, what else would you like to tell my viewers about what you're trying to do? So we have a, a theme on dynamic cloud services, and uh, that's a very exciting thing. Uh, essentially, accessing computing and storage over the cloud, over the internet. And this is an area that uh, uh, many researchers have just started working on. Our particular angle is it's dynamic, and it'll be where we will anticipate the needs that a customer has based on who they are, where they are, where their preferences are. So uh, the analogy I draw is, um, imagine you have a servant and you also have a butler. A servant will follow instructions, will, will do exactly what you tell them to do. A butler anticipates your needs and does those services for you. So our dynamic cloud services projects are essentially creating a vision of the future where we will have these services available and they'll just come to you anticipating your needs and will do the services for you. Very, very exciting. Interesting. 
Well, thanks so much. This has been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the stuff. Are you going to be at the Thank Consumer you. Electronics Show in January? Uh, probably will, yes. Are you going to have anything fun to show off there? We'll see. <laughs>